most important qualities a president must have are the power to inspire people, all people, not just Green Party, but all Americans, and the ability to lead. The power of persuasion of both the, Ameri of, of both the American people and the U.S. Congress is essential and has everything to do with how we frame the debate. One thing that Judy Barry and I did as Earth Firsters, and I have been an Earth First activist for 29 years, is we be engaged in working with organized labor. And one of the things Judy used to say, and I fully embrace this and agree with it, is that if you wanted to organize as timber workers, the first thing you had to do was like them. And having grown up in New York City, I grew up with working people, working class people, union people. My dad was union, I've been union. Uh, and so it's, it I have a great appreciation for how hard people work. And it doesn't matter if they're in a polluting industry or not. I have respect for the work that they do and their need to support their families. I am a new father, I'm 59, I'm 59 years old, and I have a three-year-old, my first child, my partner's first child. And that has more than inspired me. It, it's not that I'm saving the world for her, is that she's saving the world for me. Having a child has given me a vision for the future, which for an activist is really essential. Because the fact is, is that the way the world is right now, it's not looking pretty. We are in a situation that I believe that we're all gonna die. I'm just gonna put it out frankly. We are all going to die, not just us, all the beautiful animals in the world, all the plants. Life on this planet is ending as we speak, as we know it. So to that end, when my friend Judy Zweiman from New York called me up with a vision that I should run for president, I felt that this was the time. I'd always thought about running for president. I'd taken on the FBI. I've worked at Saving Headwaters. I've been successful in a number of campaigns. And in the long drives at night and during the day, I've given a lot of thought to national and international issues as an Earth First mind would, um, would think of them. So to that extent, I'd like to get into a little bit of my platform because I think the most important thing that a, president can do, a presidential candidate can do, and I am just testing the waters right now, I am not, not an official candidate, but the most important thing you can do is to think like a president. What can I, I do? It's not whether I can win or lose, and I certainly would run to win, and I think in fact that the Republican and Democrats are going to put up extremely weak can candidates. And, it's, and regardless of whether a Green Party candidate can win, a Green Party candidate can make a huge difference. And 5% for sure is a place where we can get federal funding. And I think if I choose the right vice presidential candidate, which would definitely be a woman uh, for sure, and I, would, I have somebody in mind, in fact, a woman of color, who you all know, by the way, that um, if we pick the right candidate and engage in the right kind of media, the right kind of guerrilla theater, and, in, and embrace and, and target the right kind of constituencies and engage in constituency building, I think 5% is within reach. So my first act as President of the United States will be to pardon and free American Indian activist Leonard Peltier. Yeah. That is something a president can do. Thank you. While I'm at it, I will issue pardons to Edward Snowden, Julian Assange, Chelsea Manning, among other political uh, activists who are, are targeted for uh, per persecution and prosecution, as well as taking a look at the people who are already in prison. And I think we need to, all, to pardon all non-violent cannabis prisoners as well. <laughs> My second act as president will be to cover the White House in solar panels. Jimmy Carter did it. Why has no other president, including Barack Obama, put the solar panels back? And I don't just mean a few of them like Carter did. I mean we're going to cover the White House's solar panels. And while we're at it, I'm going to use my executive ability and paint the front pillars of the White House green. <laughs> and that will be There you go. We can rename it the Green House. Um, and we also need to start, along with the solar panels, we need to start something I call the solar pipeline. A pipeline from solar factories to the rooftops 
of every house and every building in the United States. And that will create the ten, hundreds of thousands of new jobs and get us off of the fossil fuel addiction that we are on right now. We need to retool America's, the way America deals with energy. My third act as president of the United States will to be remove cannabis as a schedule one drug and do all within my power to make sure it is that people who are medicinal patients as well as recreational use users have access to cannabis. Cannabis is illegal for a reason. It's illegal because it is an alternative to alcohol, it is an alternative to cigarettes, it is something that people of color have used. It is also something that a lot of people consider a spiritual sacrament, as well as something that makes people peaceful instead of violent. That, that is why cannabis is illegal, not to mention the fact that it's an alternative for paper and other building products that the, uh, the dominant paradigm doesn't want to see uh, cannabis used for. So it is a, it is, it is a, cannabis is a human rights issue. We have hundreds of thousands of people in prison right now for cannabis here and millions across the globe. This stupidity needs to stop at once. And the president has the ability to deschedule cannabis. It is within the power. My fourth act will be to convert the entire White House lawn into a vegetable garden. We need to start growing our own food and the president will lead by example. And one of those examples will be to grow our own food and then distribute that food to the food banks in Washington, D.C and anywhere else where it's needed. And in addition to food banks, we need to establish seed banks so that people across America can start planting their front lawns with food. We have a terrible nutritional problem in this country. Obesity is an epidemic. The fact is one third of the American youth are ineligible to serve in our military. Uh, the, the food we're eating is making us foolish. It is it contributing to violence. It is contributing to bad, bad teeth. We need to start a war on sugar. If you'll allow me to say, we need to have a war on sugar because sugar is the number one addictive white powder drug in the United States. <laughs> it, it certainly is. I, if you'll forgive me, my fourth act as president of the United States, that was my fourth. My fifth act in the United States will be to issue an executive order to end all fracking everywhere in this country. Water. Water is a matter of security, it is a matter of survival, it is not a privilege, it is a right. Water is sacred. And I will order the Environmental Protection Agency, which is in my purview, to start uh, to commencing Superfund cleanup status to all fracking sites that are already in existence. We need to clean up this mess, and by the way, those cleanups will create jobs. If there are seven, I'll, I'll go global here, if there are seven billion people on the planet, there are seven billion clean jobs to clean this place up. We have made quite a mess. My sixth act as president will be to create a president's commission to investigate what actually happened on 9-11. That is, on 9-11, something terrible happened. We lost our soul as a nation. We lost our rights as a nation. The war on terror began. The war on people began. Uh, the, the national surveillance state ramped up its efforts. 9-11 was more than just an attack on this country, which clearly was not, as the as government says it is. It was basically a coup, and we need to, uh, I will direct my attorney general to investigate those activities as well as investigations to war crimes. And by the way, I think war crime is, is, a, is redundant, but we'll, we'll need to investigate war crimes, torture, and the activities of the NSA, the CIA, the FBI, and Homeland Security, among other entities. My seventh act as, as president will be to direct my attorney general to end what I call the war on people. And right now the war on people, as I see it, violates at least two, um, two, two, um, two elements of our Bill of Rights. The 14th Amendment of Equal Protection, but also the 8th Amendment, which protects us not just from cruel and unusual punishment, but also from ridiculous fines. And as we're looking right now, now, which has been revealed in Ferguson, but which we all know is everywhere in this country, is you get a, a $6 um, little thing in the mail to pay the Golden Gate Bridge. If you don't pay the Golden Gate Bridge fine, that fine goes up to $35 if you haven't paid it in three weeks. And if you haven't paid it in a certain period of time, that goes up from there. Poor people, even middle class people, can't afford this. The government is charging fines against people that are far, far greater than the mafia's biggest wet dream of... Uh, 
incredible interest on loan sharking deals that they make. The government is beyond the mob when it comes to their fines and their interest rates on the on on the fees that they're charging us. The war on people has to stop. <coughs> Excuse me. I will direct my attorney general to investigate acts of racism and bigotry committed by law enforcement across the United States. I, I will tell you now, black lives more than matter. Black lives are sacred. Now, all lives Thank you. More, all lives are sacred. But as we look at certain people that are targeted in this country, we need to pay particular attention to these egregious crimes against specific groups of people. So I tell you now that black lives are sacred and they certainly matter. And as, speaking of the police, the war on sugar applies to this directly. We need to get cops off of donuts. And I'm not just kidding around here. Sugar, sugar, makes people temperamental. It makes them angry. It creates a psychological imbalance in the minds of all of us and certainly in the minds of police officers. I'd like to see a study on how many of these cops had just wolfed down a bag of donuts before they went and shot somebody. So the war on sugar, the war on sugar is essential in terms of our looking at police. I'd like to start a program called Bagels, Not Donuts. Set up little coffee tables and from every cop shop. I could go on in the war. Oh, and hey, while we're at it, why can't felons vote? If you're putting all these people in prison, you also take a right to vote. Right to vote. Don't give them vote. It, it'll give them an investment in society as well as you know as part of whatever quote unquote rehabilitation that they need. My eighth act as commander in chief will to be review all wars and military intervention. We need to take a look at Iraq, Afghanistan, and in everywhere else we are. Fact is, we are making things worse. Everywhere we go, not better. No matter how bad ISIS is, no matter how bad the Taliban and Al-Qaeda is, when we step in, we make it worse. And the fact is, we funded, we created a lot of those organizations. And to think that we're going to be the ones who end them is ridiculous. And as far as military aid goes, we need to cease military aid to any country that commits war crimes and crimes against humanity. That includes both Israel and Egypt, who are the number one and number two recipients of our aid. This is not to say that I don't feel great compassion toward Israel, but Israel, I'm sorry to say, as a Jew, was created based on the elimination of the Palestinian people from the area that they lived in, and this is a tragedy of, of the Jewish legacy, but it is also not to be taken out of the context that the Jews were subject to the Holocaust, they were subject to incredible pogroms, they were subject to Socialist Russia casting them out. And in fact, when the creation of Israel happened, what did the Arab neighbors do? Iraq, Egypt, Libya, Jordan, cast out all of the Jewish people. And where did they go? Ironically, a lot of them went to Israel. So this is an extremely complicated issue. But, but the fact is, is that the settlements have to stop. What the settlements represent is a shift from Israel being a kibbutznik socialist state into to an imperial and colonial state, and they have to be called on for what they are. And I, and, and immigration is a very misframed issue. First and foremost, the principal reason people leave their countries is because the policies of those countries make it unlivable. The wars that we fight make countries unlivable. The support for the war on drugs in Mexico and Colombia, etc., make life un the, unlivable. The propping up of dictators makes life un unlivable, and they come here. And what do they do when they come here? They work their butts off. They are the hardest working people, some of the hardest working people in this country, and they do the jobs that we don't, don't want to do. The, the jobs they do are often degrading, they're filthy, and the fact of the matter is, is that we need those immigrants. We appreciate those immigrants coming here, and I want to say thank you for coming here and helping us make this country great. We have a crisis of mental health and drug addiction in this country. Here in little tiny Garberville, we're seeing hordes of youth addicted to methamphetamine and heroin, basically flooding the streets, and we see it in New York, we see it in Santa Cruz, we see it in tiny towns, as well as major cities. So we need, I plan to create a president, a president's commission on mental health and drug addiction, rehabil and rehabilitation and education. I into the dismantling of our social structures, which doesn't just help people get off drugs, but also helps families who are poor. The most important, I believe, the most important resource we have in this country is our children. 
And what we're seeing now for children is a lack of meaningful education, nutritional food, a clean environment, family support, parks, sport, and protection from abusive people, whether it's their parents or, or others, including teachers and religious leaders and other people. We need to protect our children. And one of the things I want to do is invoke the 14th Amendment of the, of the Constitution and make sure that all schools are created equal, that the school buses are created equal, the roads that they drive on are created equal. And so we need to, wait, we need to change the way we teach our children. Let's put an emphasis on real life knowledge, carpentry, mechanics, and foreign languages in particular. We should start teaching our children foreign languages when they're two years old. Old. I've started teaching my three-year-old daughter Spanish. Actually, I'm having people uh, from Spanish countries come in as part of an interim, er, intern program I have on my farm. I have an organic vegetable farm and I have an apple orchard as well. And I encourage Spanish speakers to come and also to teach my daughter Spanish. But this whole thing about only wanting to have one language, we shouldn't just be speaking two languages. We should be speaking three, four, five languages. It will make us internationally competitive. It will make us smarter. There's a false myth that the private sector can do things better than government. If that was the case, why does every single thing we buy fall apart the minute we bring it home? Why does the private sector, why does the private sector export jobs to, to India, to China, and, and other places? That's the message the private sector is giving. If they're so great, why is that what the private sector does? The federal government actually runs things exceedingly well, given the enormous enormity of size, the library system, the motor vehicles, social security, Medicare, the passport system, are mammoth institutions that function remarkably well. Uh, you want to look at how corporations run? Check out your internet service. Try to get some, some customer service for your satellite. Try to get customer service for fixing the machine that you just bought and, and see what happens. The private sector, it's a myth that they do things better. The fact is, is they more often than not do things worse. Yeah, if you start to wrap up. I will put forth a proposal. Okay, thank you. We don't just need a, a national living wage. We need a global living wage. And in other words, we need to be sure that the countries we do business with pay their workers a living wage as well as we pay our workers a, a living wage. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, and uh, I can go on, but in conclusion, let me say that we need to have a society that has the complete elimination of waste. We must end all, all use of fossil fuels, and as soon as you pull the plug on fossil fuels, you will see jobs are set up, because we have an enormous fossil fuel. The climate change is, is probably the number one issue, even though I'm just bringing it up now. We need to have equal rights for all species. We need to have a fair taxation uh, system. We need, And as a Green Party member, we need to identify constituencies. We need to see that cannabis smokers are constituents, 9-11 truth seekers are constituents, mental health, health advocates earth center spiritualists, even chemtrail inquirers are part of a constituency that we can, we can uh, um, appeal to. Not just because we say it, but because we live it. And so I want to tell you that the future is not just in our hands, the future is in our hearts. And that is really key. And we're looking at not just so much we have a, a world of corporate personhood, but we have a world of corporate kingdoms. We're living a real life game of thrones. And so I want to just say to you, there are not just two Americas, there are actually 300 million Americas. Each of us has our own unique story, a struggle that is important to us and as it is to everybody else. We are part of a global family, a national family, and I say to you, as the next president of the United States, let the healing begin. Thank, Thank you. you. Matera, one of the co-chairs of uh, Green Party of New York State. Just, we just have a um, short time for questions, so we ask people to just uh, hand them in, and I'm going to just read a couple if you could address them briefly. Um, if you do not get the nomination for president, would you throw your support behind the nominee? Absolutely. I'm a big fan of Jill Stein, and not that she is necessarily going to be the candidate if I don't win, but I would absolutely build a bet back Jill. I would back Anybody, I would back the Green Party president, yes. yes. Presidential candidate, yes. Great, thank you. Uh, so, okay, one of our members said that they share your passion for fighting sugar, uh, but do you support boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement called for by South Palestinian civil society? I do, I, I absolutely support that. 
I am not entirely familiar, to, to be honest, uh, with all the dynamics of the boycotting, but I do believe that Israel is running a criminal enterprise right now. I think it's very tragic, and I do think I do support that, but I would actually want to know a little bit more about it before I speak with more knowledge. I've been researching things like crazy in this candidacy. I'm reading books on Israel and the Middle East right now, and I would like to see more about it. Please email me more about that. Thank you. Great. And Brett, just really quickly, uh, uh, any thoughts about how to at least make uh, I will quote from the writer some lemonade out of the Sanders campaign of lemons? <laughs> oh, I, I, you mentioned the Sanders campaign. Could you repeat the question? Uh, well, I, I think basically the question is, do you do you do you see making any? Um, you know, what what is your thought about the Sanders campaign? Right? It says, how can you make some lemonade yeah. out of the Sanders campaign of lemons? I, I think I think the Sanders campaign is you know somebody called him a sheepdog to get the left Democrats and a whole bunch of Green Party people to shift their um, their registration, which I think is tragic because the Green Party is about far more. In fact, it is mostly more than running for president. And every time you get somebody to unregister Green Party to vote for Bernie Sanders, you eliminate the ability of that party to live in, a, in this to to exist, uh, be credentialed in the state that they're in, to run candidates in that state. And I think that that um, that Sanders is a red herring. I do think he's got some good things to say. He talks it's a good game, but if you look at his, his position on cannabis is terrible. His position on um, on national surveillance state is not good. He has a lot of votes which we would not agree with, and I don't think he's going to get the nomination anyway. I think he is a straw dog. Great. Thank you very so much. No, I don't. Thank you very much for taking yes. the time to be with us today. And good luck. And thank you. Thank you.